Special day at uh, VNR here. They got their new toy, uh, Santa Bogren 825E. Emissions, electronic. Nobody wants to see that E on there. But what's cool is uh, you got the same engine as your pickup truck. Yeah, good old 6.7 Cummins. But you know your crew cab, long box, dually, uh, what's the highest trim level now? Yeah, they go for about 100, 110,000. Well, you could buy five of those Dodge pickups or one of these Santa Bogrens. Let's take a good look at it. Here we go. So over the last decade, uh, VNR slowly been going strictly Senebogen. They had some Liebers, but mainly it's Senebogen's in the yard. I think their oldest one is a 2010, somewhere around there. The one in the background is a 2018. Um, and if you guys are interested in us doing a review on what the machine is like after two years, let us know and we'll, we'll hop in that machine. We'll do a separate video, but they're used the minute they come into the yard and there's only one time where it's brand new. They just kind of want to look at uh, this 2020 model. We're going to be getting a clam for it and then putting it right to work. They've had it for about a week uh, and they're just waiting on the clam. So um, right off the bat, a couple changes over the years. Uh, instead of the rod at the front, they now have it on the side. Dual direction, so it sucks and blows. Keeps it nice and clean. Uh, six, seven Cummins, and I'm sure it's tuned completely different, but the same as what would be in the Dodge pickup 6.7. I don't know about the turbo. It looks like a pretty big turbo. I don't know what they would have, um, if that's still a variable vein. I believe so, yeah. And then your regen system at the top. It's tier four, and we got to deal with it until we find some other solution. I think there is actually electric, like a hybrid version of these with an electric on it, and VNR opted to not get that one. Another couple big changes, I think they really tried to make it so that everything's accessible from the ground. It's got its own auto greaser, so you don't have to grease anything anymore, which is good. Scrap yards are not known for their best maintenance. Sorry, Randy. <laughs> but these machines were always kind of nice to get at. They were very simple. They have very simple hydraulics in them as well. So the machine itself was always very basic. And what I mean basic is no stupid electronics to uh, fail because it is a very dusty, dirty um, condition in here. Um, a couple extra steps to get up and take a look if you're short, but if you're six foot, um, like me, <laughs> uh, you can basically get at pretty well everything through the side. Ladder on the front, which is going to get knocked off pretty quick. I think they're European, so they're very much into their safety. Nice and easy, accessible, everything nice and open here. You get right at your regen, your afterburner, all that fun, good stuff. I don't ever want to touch that. So your hydraulic tank, your turns, your feeds, nice some sort of dial down there that I probably shouldn't touch. And the manual even says that it comes with bulletproof glass. So there's a steel cannonball in the yard, like a nice small one. So VNR said we can chuck them at the windows. But if you are a young kid or you're in high school and things like this fascinate you and you're like, I want to be part of a team that designs something cool like this, something um, that you're proud of and that works well, that makes money, that's easily repaired. Um, I don't know who 
at what meeting thought that, you know what, hey guys, let's put a cheap plastic housing on the top of the machine. I'm gonna put lots of little fins on the top that hold water and then it's gonna freeze and crack and this thing's gonna fall off and destroy that engine down below. Guys, take pride in your work. This is, this is sad, this is pathetic. Such a nice, well-built machine cheaped out so much on this air filter, I, I don't know. The air filters used to be down below underneath, I think. First recall, Senna Bogan Cummins, I don't care who did it, get rid of this. Because all of these hydraulic lines, uh, you got your main pumps, um, and this is what feeds your boom, all the oil it needs to do its functions. All of this is very nicely on the outside. Not one hose more difficult than the other, and very easily accessible. Now each one of these hose is massively expensive, um, especially because it's made in Italy. Very nice design, up out of the way, and I don't think they've ever had any issues with um, the hoses being a problem. They have, however, had an issue with the electronics for the magnet. The scrap will hit the wires and shear it, and that causes a pile of electrical issues with the generator and frying stuff and burning stuff, but that's a condition that these machines are in, not necessarily a design flaw. So in the fact of simple hydraulics, pilot operated valves, very straightforward, simple stuff. You got all your fuses, nicely accessible right here. Yeah, it's good that they have it labeled, but it's a German, so we might still have to make a sticker for that. <laughs> What's a Strudengraten Klemme? You got your emissions solutions, and then your auto greaser, and then a couple more coolers. Oh no, sorry, that's ECU. And then let's climb into the cab. But yeah, very, very straightforward. And, then, and they knew I was coming, so they didn't take the plastic off the seat because I'm already dirty. All right, a couple of big changes in the cab. No more steering wheel, so everything is done with joysticks. Um, that'll take some getting used to. Uh, very simple controls here. We got some lights, oilers. I'm not even sure what those do. Beacon and emission stuff. And then down below, everything is done through your control screen here. Radio, AC, wipers, and... This would be your uh, outriggers. Still have the cameras. I think there's two or three or four different uh, angles that you can look at and rotate through. And it still has the... Do, do I get to be the one to pull this off? <laughs> I better leave it. What's cool is when I went for my heavy equipment, I was in London, Ontario, and Zubik Scrapyard in the middle of London. They were the first ones in North America to get a Cenobogan. So it was shipped over to Vegas where they handed them the keys and then they trucked the crane from uh, Vegas over to Ontario. They wanted me to work for them at the time because I stayed at the owner's house while I went to school for residence. I think I was the third person to actually run a Cenobogan. So <laughs> I got to drive it through the yard and everybody's like, why is Rich driving the Senna Respectfully, I turned the job down because I couldn't live in the city and I love the country. And now Senna Bogans are everywhere. So it's not that, uh, not that odd. So I don't know if I'm allowed to start it, if there's something missing or whatever. Let's just fire it up. If they didn't want me to start it, they shouldn't leave the keys. Put screen on the camera. Oh, that's a lot of button. Let's see. Fuel, water, oil degrees, 20%, whatever on your def. 3.6 liters per hour. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, diagnostics, 20 hours on it. I get a kick out of this. This is like an amusement ride. <laughs> that I'm in the machine now. Where else can you go and fire up a $500,000 thing and just kind of goof off for a little bit? It's got a um, auto idle where if you're waiting, it automatically idles down to try and save fuel in the environment, stuff like that. As soon as you go, it revs right back up again, which is 
is really nice. Really smooth. <laughs> you don't bang it into the ground. <laughs> Pretty cool job, and we really want to thank BNR for everything that they've done for us too. Letting me hop in equipment like this and goof it off. <laughs> and all the other stuff we get to rummage through the yard and grab whatever. Um, so it's been really, really cool. If you guys get a chance, swing by BNR. They've always got cool stuff in the yard. Everything's for sale, including steel and stuff that they've got piles of out back, probably cheaper than at your, uh, your, your steel market. Uh, we're waiting for a clam. We'll throw a clam on it, and then we'll have some fun with a clam. Here we go. Alright, so the day is finally complete. We uh, got to put the center bowl into use. Actually, we got a brand new clam from Bateman. And they've got some updates on it as well. It's got a quick attach on it now. Cody's still figuring out the center bowl too, so it's pretty cool. That's really handy. Oh, it is. I don't know why they didn't come up with that before, because you know when we go do job sites? It's a pain in the ass that you know, that's like... It'd be nice to put on all of them. That's what I'm saying. The torque on these is... You <laughs> like it, So we're back in the center bogan. Uh, we've let them uh, try it out a little bit, the owners. <laughs> and a couple things right off the bat. There was a safety in the, um, in the arm where they went to extend all the way and it would actually stop. And what that did is protect all the packings in the cylinder from uh, full extension. But what that created was a little uh, lull in the, in the arm. And because you're using the claw on a swing, couldn't throw things anymore. So they removed that safety um, after signing a waiver saying that they're not gonna come back at them on a warranty on that cylinder. We got our armrests here that we can raise and lower so we're comfortable on the joysticks. I'm not a fully experienced operator yet, but we'll see what I can do. Somebody dropped in a, a GM that's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, they just wanted the bed liner out of it. So we'll see if I can grab the bed liner and uh, then we can sell that and then we'll, we'll pull it apart piece by piece. So it's kind of hard to do commentary and run a machine that you've never actually ran before. Let's see if I can grab that bed line without damaging the truck, because you know, it is a really nice truck. Oh, oh I kind of dented the box a little bit. That's no good. There we go. Put that off to the side for somebody. I think they were gonna pay a couple hundred bucks for that. I think somebody did want the box. So see if we can pull the box off of this truck. Oh, a little salt belt is holding on to that box pretty good. I'll try to do the, uh, the old flipper on it. There we go. 
go. Grab the other side. Oh, that's really holding on. Well, we got we got one bed side here. That'll work good for a body shop who wants to use that. Let's see if we can grab the, the bottom of it. Now there's safety so that the swing can't hit the cab. Figure out the oh, see I hit the cab. Oh, it's terrible. This bumper's still good. We'll try and grab the bumper. I'm getting too excited. I'm, I'm even lifting up before I actually have a full uh, <laughs> grip of it. <laughs> So what we've done now is we've done a, a lowered track. It looks pretty sick, actually. That's a pretty, that's a very easy mod to do if you've got a giant crane. I know tire machines are expensive, and you don't want to invest two, three thousand dollars. So what you can do is buy a five hundred thousand dollar crane and use that to pull the tire. The hood is still good. Let's see if I can do it without banging into the windshield. the hood. Oh, I forgot half the hood. That's terrible. That's a, like, half-ass job. There we go. There's the rest of the hood. Now, there was an issue with these trucks, and that's the 4060. I'll show you where guys, where that is, guys. That's that's right here. That's right, right there. And, and you know what? You really, you just want to get rid of that as quickly as you can and rebuild that anyway because it really is a big problem with these trucks. And I say that, but I don't think that I can just grab the transmission out of it. I gotta get a good grip on that step fire. We don't wanna scratch it, but a little dent is all right. There we go. We got the step fire for somebody. Machine, yeah. So it's the end of the day and they ran out of def fluid, so it's in limp mode now. So whether it's a base model pickup or a $600,000 scrap handler, it's gonna go to limp mode unless you have the def tank full or some def in there. So whether we like it or not, you might as well use the good stuff. Um, we're using peak blue def. Doing our part to save the environment, right? Here we go. It is a really nice machine. We all know about the def. If you guys want to see more reviews, definitely comment down below if you have a new machine. Other than that, um, we're going to go back to work. Here we go. <laughs> you got a dope kitty. Hey, kitty. You haven't been killed yet? Oh, you're a kitty. You're a kitty.